Welcome to another episode of Investing in Intellectual Property with Dave. Today we have a very special guest with us. This gentleman is a former NFL athlete, the founder of the O-Line Lab, and the current head coach of Howard University. Please help me welcome Arthur Ray. What's, What's going on? on? Hey, man, you good? On? Oh, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, but I appreciate it. I know we've been, this has been a long time coming, but I know how that football season uh goes and you know just ending with the football season uh with the celebration bowl and I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative that you're able to uh, give us some time here today uh I mean I, I want to start with the seller uh with just the football season because this is your first year as a uh like the, the office line coach uh yeah it's part of like like the main staff as opposed to I know you was you, know, you did some, a few other different uh roles uh which you know we get off into whether it's assistant head coach or assistant line coach or whatnot mm -hmm. Uh, but how, how does it feel just coming off that first full year of being the main guy teaching the O-line and the, the, the guys in the trenches? I know you have experience with this uh, with you know, from the playing days and from you know, prior coaching days, but how does it feel to do it, especially with a program such as Howard? Man, it was good. It was a blessing. You know, uh, like you said, you know, I spent time in Arkansas being an analyst, you know, working with the O-line and them guys down there. But, man, going coming to Howard – First time in D.C., first time on the East Coast, you know, so it's, it was it was good, man. I, I and then, of course, my first time, first experience with HBCU, you know, us going to state and not not even experiencing that from a recruiting standpoint. You know, it was it was different, man. It was fun enough. You know, I love it. I, I enjoy everything about Howard. You know, we got great head coach Larry Scott. You know, he gave me the opportunity, man. And we had a, had a hell of a year. You know, first time on. First Howard team to the win the MEAC since '93. We won it outright, won conference. We we fell short to FAMU in the Celebration Bowl, man. But it was it was overall great experience. Great experience. No, and, and, and that's good. And I definitely had the tip the cat. I was looking at the schedule, like okay, these guys was you know a lot of the games was close games, especially against the big time uh, opponents. With the, I'm talking about the losses, uh, specifically Northwestern, Big Ten. Yep. You guys lose by three points. South Carolina State, another decent program that you guys lost only by three points. You guys were undefeated at home, so it seems like you guys. Had a really uh had a pretty good season. I, I you had mentioned something with coming from a, a PWI in Michigan State. I know my cousin; he's an attorney as well. He's about ten years older than me. He graduated from Jackson State, and we yeah. not now. You know, he go down there every year for homecoming. And I like the past five or six years, I take that road trip. Me and some other people will take that road trip. And the first time I went down there, man, I was blown away. Like this, how oh, people yeah. get down at these HBCUs. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what was your first experience? Uh, just really like taking it all in as far as being at an HBCU and uh, all the love that's kind of get thrown, uh, thrown, uh, thrown out, out that way. Being, uh, being down here, man. I think it's it's the people, man. Biggest biggest difference is people. It's us. We we everywhere. You know, you have to love that aspect of it. I think my first um, introduction to it officially was uh, every Thursday on campus. It's Soul Food Thursday. So the calf, calf, they make it fried catfish. Chicken, mac and cheese, greens. I'm like, oh yeah, this is different. This ain't Case Hall, boy. So, <laughs> hey, you know, yeah. so that was my first time really getting acquainted with uh with everything with Howard. But just man, the, the alumni presence. And then another thing, big thing that people don't, I didn't know. You know, I mean, right. my first year coaching, I didn't realize how nationally known Howard was. You know, just when I went, I'm down in Alabama recruiting. I'm in Cali. I got Howard gear on. People stopping me, like you know, just the brand, the brand of Howard University, how respected it is and notable it is. So it was, yeah, it was good, good year for me, man. Now that sounds like a plan. So then going into the next year, man, I, I understand what hey, you got the with your feet wet. You know, being the main guy teaching the guys in the trenches the first year, first full year. I'm assuming that is uh, only up from here uh, with with Howard and any other opportunities that come about. Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, we in that we in that time a year now where, you know, coaches get a lot of different opportunities. You know, I love what I'm doing at Howard, love what we building with Coach Scott, you know. So uh yeah, I'm looking forward to coming back to HU next year. You know, I ain't really got heard too much about anything now, but I know that can change. But yeah, it's it's an exciting time, definitely, man. Exciting. And, and I have to, because the NIL, looking back, we was playing at Michigan State, that that wasn't a thing. So it was, man, it it, it got tough at times, uh but now in these uh, this day and age with the NIL name, image, and likeness, and cats being able to get paid, and you see a lot of man, you know, it's, it's like free agency these days in college yeah. football with people going left and right. And uh, I was just interviewing yesterday Cameron Martinez. He from my hometown in Muskegon, and he was at Ohio State for three, four years. Now he just transferred to Boston College as a grad transfer. 
Right. I, I want to ask you as a like HBCU, how, how does that kind of affect you guys uh, with you know, all the transferring and uh, the NILs being thrown around? I guess what do you guys do to stay competitive uh, in this atmosphere? Man, it's tough. You know, it's tough because now, you know, nowadays you, you got to think we was we was just fired up to get the scholar, just to get the scholarship, just to get a call to get recruited. Nowadays, you know, you you calling guys and they yeah, hey, coach, they offering me this. And I'm whoa, you know, especially when I was at Arkansas. When I was at Arkansas, I think that's when uh, Texas they had passed. They was one of the first teams to hop on the NIL train. They was giving all their O linemen, any O lineman who signed was getting fifty thousand. You know, really? just being a Texas old lineman. You know, I'm in Arkansas now, so I'm making calls, and I'm like, okay, yeah, we got to get the game. You know, and that's when, um, you know, they has first started adding it there. But being at Howard, man, I think it's one is more about people, and then two, you you got to get the right guys. The good thing about the NIL is, and uh, really, because I, I fuse it all into one. Not only you battle in the NIL, but the portal too. Right. So the portal is killing high school recruiting because everybody want a quick fix. Right. But that means it's a lot of good high school players. Available. Okay. So we able to hop in on those guys. But then I, it's just, man, it's a it's just a process. I know our head coach, you know, he was talking about he got some future meetings trying to get some us starting with the NIL, NIL collective. We got to be able to compete. And then especially like you said, with us, we play Eastern Michigan game one, you know, they scored two times on special teams. You take that away, offense versus defense, it was a pretty good game. I think, you know, we had a chance to come out with that game. And then we only lost three to Northwestern. Who eventually, they had coach for one coach of the year, and they just won a bowl game, and that would have been a program win. So we right there. You know, so I think that, you know, for us to continue to stay competitive, for HBCUs to continue to stay competitive, I mean, we, we got to get with the times. So, it, it, so it's exciting to know that, you know, we got a possibility to – start a NIL at Howard, you know, in the future. And I know our head coach, he working downhill on that type of stuff so we can compete, man, because it is what it is. You know, when you when you get on the phone with these guys and I'm like, hey, man, I want you to come come ball for me at Howard. He, yeah, coach, you know, Toledo saying they can do this and Michigan State saying they can do this. And I'm, man, I'm with you. If I was you, <laughs> I'd be I would say the same thing. So I can't, you know, it ain't like we sugarcoated. We understand the, the landscape, man, so we just trying to navigate through it. No, for sure. And, uh, and it seems like Ohio State, uh, I think they ADA came out recently, was saying that, man, you know, these recruits, they want money to come on visits these days. Which I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Come on a visit, you want to get paid? Mm -hmm. But again, if you see all this money being thrown around, uh, hey, man, as an athlete coming up, like you said, that's a good thing about having former uh, uh, players as coaches because they get it. Like, you guys get it. You get it. Like, okay, I probably would have been kind of doing the same thing. Like, okay, this coach saying this or this coach saying that. Uh, you know, what you got mm -hmm. for me or – we have to make it make sense just from a business standpoint. So uh, I definitely understand that. Definitely understand that. Kind of moving on uh, a little bit. Now, I, I want to I want to kind of go back before kind of talk. I know you had a lot of different stops along the way from, yeah. you know, in Northwood, which is in the school at Michigan Division II. Yeah. Yeah. We talked a little bit about uh, the fellow you was with the Green Bay Packers, you were with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and obviously played at Michigan State free agent with the Dolphins. Uh, but I, I want to take, take people back to like 2007 because it's not too many times when I see a successful person, it's not too many times that I see a successful person and I can see like the fire that's burning within them or the passion in which they go about their day-to-day activities with everything they doing. You are different in that, man, Every not only that you're successful, but man, when I see you and I follow you, whether it's what you speaking or just how you going about your day, your activities personally and professionally, Man, you got this passion. Even people hearing you talk just right now, man, you got this passion in you that we can feel, but uh, or not, but but that that came from some something I would imagine somewhere I would imagine, and I'm not sure. Going back in 2007, and hey, you a big time O line recruit. Obviously, you committed and uh, signed with Michigan State, but uh, again, you were one of the nation's top offensive guards, and uh, then you kind of get some news that kind of threw a monkey rich and everything. So can you talk a little bit about, go back to 2007 and talk a little bit about that that time period? Yep. I mean, hey, it's an interesting time, man. Now it's, uh, you know, and I, even, even I still think back on it now. You know, that's the, that's the driver. It's one of the driving forces that pushes me besides my own, you know, personal things I want to accomplish. But, man, in 2007, I, I did what I wanted to do. That's what I tell everybody. I think that, um, 2007, everything was going right. And I think that anybody that has success, they'd experience that where 
where you put the work in it like, damn, I'm really seeing the success. Like it's really happening right in front of me, you know? So I, I, I worked hard, man. I, I, I remember talking to my dad and my grandfather and my uncle about, you know, I want earn scholarships. I want to be that guy in high school. You know, I want to, I want to, and I put the work in and it, it came to fruition. I ended up with, you know, over 30 scholarship offers coming out of Mount Carmel in Chicago and uh, everything was clicking. Got, got, uh, voted to the All American game. I'm down there, man. I'm down there with Cam Newton, Joe Hayden, Carlos Dunlap. I'm the all guy guys when they had long, successful NFL careers. You know, it's crazy. Big Tone's down there. Tony O. Jeremiah. Oh, really? Yeah, I know you know, that, yeah, that's my first time I met Tone. So, you know, I'm I'm feeling good. I went from a football sense and from what I wanted as an athlete, everything's flowing. All I got to do is sign this, sign this uh, national letter of intent, get to Michigan State and ball. You know, that's all I'm thinking. So, uh, man, um, man, uh, sign of day come, Michigan State hoodie, hat, all that, smiling with the family. Every, like I said, my senior year of high school, we lost in the state title game, but in terms of individually, everything going how I wanted it to go. You know, uh, Coach D just got there. Uh, Coach Rochard just leaving Chicago. So, you know, I went through all that process. And then uh, two weeks later, get diagnosed with bone cancer. Shocked my world, shook my world. And, you know, it's crazy. It came from an injury that I had felt in the middle of the playoffs. Like I had, a, I had that the lump on my shin. I saw that lump on my shin in November. Didn't realize that lump on my shin was cancer until that next February. So, you got so it's, it started in yeah. November with the yeah. injury. Yeah, well, it, it started in it started in November. I'm thinking it's just a knickknack. We in the middle of the playoffs, man. It's like early November, and you know if you playing in November, it's cold outside. You playing close to Thanksgiving. You playing good ball. So you know we playing in the playoffs. I get hit on the shin. I don't think nothing of it. You know, I'm icing it. My coach keeps me out of practice a couple of days. We had a uh, quarterfinals that week or something. And I go to the quarterfinals. I'm good. I wrap it up. Ain't nothing I ain't do. I put a little ace band on it. Next thing you know, the season in, man, I go play. I play in all. I played an all American game with the cancer on my leg. I play. I finished. The, I played in probably three games playoffs. So I played in four games, not knowing that that lump on my shin was a tumor, right? So I get back to school. We done. Get back to school. I'm taking my visits and um man, I uh I'm like, man, I'm walking upstairs and I'm like, yo, dad, I can't, you know, my, my leg really hurt me. Like it's really something wrong with my leg. You know, I can't get upstairs. And I'm like, I'm like, man, I don't want this to affect me wherever I go. I'm like, you know, let's go, you know, I think we should go to the doctor. And my dad, you know, we went to the doctor and uh man, I got a biopsy, man. And it, it, that news that came back shook my world. You know, I'm thinking mm -hmm. it. I'm thinking it's because I had shin splits and then I had a stress fracture my junior year. I'm thinking it's like, okay, a little stress fracture, a little shin splits probably just swelled up. It ain't nothing. I'm like, man, I'm, I'd have been through, been through hell on the field already from a physical standpoint. So I'm good. And, uh, man, that doctor came back. He said, uh, you need to start chemotherapy immediately. Really? Uh, and, uh, yeah, your football career might be over. I'm whoa. You know what I mean? Like, whoa, you at 17, man. At 17, when you know that's that's that was my identity. Yeah, for that's sure. It. That was it. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, I ain't, I mean, it's ball. You know, that's all I know. All I know is ball, man. You know, um, and uh, having a chance to do what I wanted to do, my world was shook, man. I I literally it was signing day. I got the news. I started chemotherapy a week after signing day. Like I'm and I'm I'm in the hospital, like shook, like still shocked. Um, I remember the first, the first doctor I went to, he told me that uh, they was probably about to cut my leg off. Really? I, yeah, I'd never play ball again. That was the first opinion. That's why I always tell people get second opinions. All right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, that's why I don't, yeah, man, I, uh, the first doctor I went to see, he said, man, um, you know, uh, normally, because I had an osteosarcoma, so normally uh, the sarcomas, the, especially that one, is towards the knee. So most people need to get full knee replacements, right? So my first, my first sign of, first sign of God, I guess, in this, in in the midst of turmoil, my second opinion. So I I, uh, I took chemotherapy at uh, at UIC Hospital downtown Chicago. They referred me to Chicago Rush. So I go to Rush, and I I walk in. This world class doctor uh, named Steven Gatellis. Man, he got awards on the wall. This man, he the man. You know, he got plaques all. I'm walking in here. And I, you know, I'm like, man, I'm just waiting to see what he got to say, you know. And uh, man, he came in there, he pulled my X-ray up, and he said, because of the spot of your tumor, I'm not gonna have to touch your knee, and I'm not gonna have to touch your ankle. And that, that's the only reason why I can walk. 
right now. That's the only reason why I was able to come back and play ball because the spot where my tuna was, it was perfectly right in the middle of my of my tibia. You know? Wow. Well, wow. yeah. so yeah. now, and I was going to say, so then, man, in the midst of all this going through, you know, surgery, chemo, all that stuff. Yep. Man, you like you said, you just signed. So how was that news breaking it to Coach D and the Michigan State staff? Because ultimately, man, you 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 ended up enrolling into Michigan State in 2008, the next year. But they still yep. which so class on their behalf to honor scholarship and still have you being a part of the team. Man, bless it, man. Only thing I can say is God, man, and Coach D being the the man that he is. You know, me and me and Coach D got a got a pretty solid relationship. You know, we we had some we had some real conversations when I was young. You know, and I think that's why we we so tight now. But the biggest thing I respect to him, man, I there I remember I came home and I'm crying. I'm hurt. I'm in the basement of my crib. I'm I, I can't even, you know, I can't even think about what's really happening, like to me, you know, right now. I pick up the phone, I call Coach Roshar, and I'm just like, Coach, you know, uh the worst possible news. I I ain't never known this, this stuff though. You know, I'm young now. I'm like, this don't run in my family. Coach, I don't know what happened. You know, you know, man, I can't, I don't know what's going on. And uh, I told him, and I told Coach D, Coach D told me, don't worry about nothing, man, just worry about getting healthy. And, uh, you know, we're going to keep you on scholarship, man. When I, I heard that, I'm, wow, you know, I, it's, it's light at the end of the tunnel. Like, it's, it's crazy now, you know, now as a grown man, now being 16 years removed from the situation, I see all the lights that I had that kept me pushing. You understand? Like, not only I, I had just met a doctor that said, hey, it's a chance that you play ball again. It's a chance now. You know, most people, this they wouldn't want to play ball again, but you already know you're not going to stop. So it's a chance. That's all I needed. And then Coach D saying, I got the opportunity to still be on scholarship. I still can go to Michigan State. Okay. Bet. You know, so as, as hurt as I was, I still it still was a light at the end of the tunnel. Still was a lot to continue to to strive and, uh, and fight for and work for, man. But definitely a a difficult ass time, but yeah, they 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 put their arms around and, Coach D as well as all the Michigan State fans. Right, and, and, and obviously we had uh got in contact uh 2008 when we were both mm -hmm. on the team, and uh yeah. and, and it's one of the things that you said earlier. Most people after hearing this, they don't even want to play ball anymore. But it was yeah. something within you that said, and hey, not only am I gonna overcome the the the, the tumor and the cancer, but I'm gonna actually play ball again. And I would yeah. imagine that it was a ton of people. Maybe even some of the same people at Michigan State who, uh, you know, for one reason or another, doubted that that was yep. a real possibility. Yep. Uh, but, you know, just seeing the work that you put in every day, uh, mm -hmm. just in the facilities with you working out, kind of going through treatment, things like that. Uh, at, at what point did things look like, man, it's a, it's, it's, it's a real opportunity for me to get back to actually playing ball? Because it was a number of years that you ate the yellow jersey, or on crutches, whatever the case may be, yeah. just kind of going through yeah. the treatment. But then at some point, it had to be like, okay, this is a real possibility when I can I can actually get out there with my brothers and get in the trenches and uh, do what I do. So at what point did that happen? Man, it's it, being on crutches for two years. I was on crutches for two years, man. Then that the re the rehabilitation process was uh, probably a total of four years because I came back I came back in 2011. Well, no, I'm sorry. The two, yeah, yeah, 2011 spring ball. That spring ball of 2011, that's when I finally came back. You got to think. I got diagnosed in 07. So that was four years. It took me four years of, of mental rehabilitation as well as physical. I think that uh, the, the turning point was when I finally got off crutches, man. That was the biggest step. When I finally got off crutches. Cause remember, I, had, I was on crutches. I wasn't supposed to be on crutches that long. I ended up being on crutches 25 months, two years to be exact. And I'm at state. So I, you know, me, whether it was me, uh, I'm off crutches when I'm not supposed to be because I'm feeling good. I'm like, no, I'm good. You know, we back. You know, I, I'm young and 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 I, you know, we at we at state, man. So yeah. I, I want to be, I want to be a part of college. I want to, you know, get active and 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 do all those things that you know that you want to do when you go to school. And you know, that set me back. Then I got a, I had got a, uh, I had got a a bone infection or as my bone was healing, had to have another surgery that put me on crutches another eight months. So it's, it was set back. It was, I take a step forward. I take two steps back, I take a step forward. I take two steps back. And, you know, throughout that, you know, just, just learning how to learn how to endure, man, learning how to have faith. And, and like you said, it's, it wasn't that many people that actually saw me 
coming back to ball other than me. You know, and that, but that's what it's crazy because that's the space that I love now. I love that. I'm the only person that needs to think I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> and that's yeah. just a valuable lesson in life. Like, again, yeah. everybody not going to believe in you. Heck, yeah. nobody probably not going to believe in you. But as long as you believe yeah. in yourself with whatever mm-hmm. it is that you're trying to do, mm-hmm. then, man, you got a chance. And it seemed like that was the same mindset that you took going through this whole process. And that was it. You got to think, when I was, when I was younger, it was nobody's fault I got sick, man. I'm searching. You know how you, yeah, you know, like, oh, this person did this to me. I'm finna do it. Yeah, I'm finna, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, man, who gave me care? So, you know, in my mind, these are the battles you have in your mind. I'm like, yeah, it ain't nobody's fault. So it's everybody's fault. Everybody gonna feel me. Everybody gotta pay. You know, now, as I was younger, I was channeling that energy the wrong way. I think it, it hit a switch at state, man, when I was like, okay, I'm mad at the wrong things. And I really need to use this anger I have in the weight room, in rehab, to myself. And that's when I transcended, I swear. That's when I, that's when everything took off. When I was, stop looking outward and stop hearing everything. I stopped, hey, man, you good. You know, you don't need to play ball, man. You know, just, just thank God you're alive. And, but I'm alive. I'm alive for a reason, for a purpose. And, I, oh, and I'm like, man, God, hey, I, I felt too strongly about coming back to being myself. I felt too strongly about becoming this, the man I am today, you know, it's, it's crazy. Man. Like, yeah, like, I, I, I always saw it. And, you know, so nobody was going to deter me then, man. But you, like you said, it's those, the, these are the same things that I teach my players. That's why I'm so like that passion and the energy, that fire, it, that's all, all that is, is all that anger that I had. And now I, I used it to transcend myself. You redirected it as opposed to, you know, taking it out on other people. You, hey, yep. let me, let yep. me, Make sure I'm using it or channeling things in the right way, whether it's like you said, in a weight room or uh, mm-hmm. treatment or uh, studying film or whatever the case may be. It seemed like you, you gotta learn that, that, man. Yeah. You gotta learn that because I was a boy. I was, yeah, I was a boy in state trying to find my way, and then not. I'm trying to during a time where we all trying to find our way. We all young. We all, you know, what I'm saying we from where we from, and then we come to college. We together, and now we trying to become men and you know do those things. I'm coming back from an injury. And you know that's that's messing with me from a mental standpoint yeah. and trying to become a man. So it was a lot of a lot of hurdles, man. That's why, you know, uh, the processes, even things that I do now, I, mean, I believe in in meditation. You know, I'm real spiritual. Of course, my faith is impeccable, man. Y'all you know, pray to God all that. I spend so many real conversations with God, like and myself. And then you know, like you like you said, I I think that um I felt alone a lot. I felt alone, man, even though I'm surrounded by love and support. And that's the, people don't speak on that a lot. You feel alone where you feel like, yeah, they love me. Yeah, they care about me. Yeah, people, you know, that's not really a, well, some people do. Maybe they feel sorry for you and they want to, you know, they want to do that. But then, you know, it, it all stopped. Now you get to the crib and you, and I'm, man, I'm really in this. I really, I'm really facing this. And I got to, you know, I got to deal with this every step of the way. Well, so, so then once, it was a real thing. I'm assuming that initially it was between you and the doctors. Like, okay, you yeah. young boy. How did the coaching staff at Michigan State receive that information? Because again, up until this point, well, you're just you're you're on a team, and again, maybe some or whatever had didn't have expectations. You actually playing, so were yeah. they receptive to that, or was it like, oh, we all know, <laughs> skeptical? Yeah. Or like, let's do it. How, how did yeah. they react to that? You know what's funny, man? They uh. And it's and and you know I have mixed reviews. As I get older, I look at it from a different lens now, because when I was playing, I got me and Coach D are so close because we had difficult conversations when I was becoming a man. We had difficult conversations. We had conversations where I'm at Coach D's office, like what, like hey, like you know, like yeah, and then he like man, who you know what I'm saying? He like who you think you talking? And I'm like no, I'm way more aware than you think I am, right? You know, because especially as I got healthier, you know, and um, I took it personal. To be honest, I took it personal. And and again, that's that anger. You know, they sitting here like, Arthur, you're healthy. You good. You about to graduate college. Go be great. I'm like, that's your story. That ain't my story. You understand? Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So, like and they did. And they and 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 they ain't everybody ain't like that. Everybody like, whoa, what you mean? And and you, you know, all of that, you they they try to turn you into they try to, you know, to say that that energy is 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 negative. No, I I have found myself then. I was gonna make it whether they believed in me or not. Right. 
And you know, one when they we had a lot of those conversations about, hey, you fine, man. Hey, you can, you know, you don't gotta prove nothing to us. You don't gotta prove nothing to yourself, man. You done already. I'm no, I got everything to prove to myself. Everything to prove to myself. Cause I felt like people didn't understand. I felt like I let myself down. I felt like I let myself down. I think that um for the longest, you know, I it's you know how you create figures. I created I created a statue of myself. It's funny, I got the gold 73 on now. That, yeah, that boy retired. That's just yeah, yeah, yeah. That's memories, right? So yeah, I, I had a statue of my high school self as this perfect figure. That was the guy. And when I was when I got sick, when I had no hair, no eyebrows, when that chemo really kicking in, when I'm starting to lose weight, when I'm not as big, I'm not as strong, when I'm looking in the mirror and I don't see that guy anymore. That was profound to me. Like, I, and you know, it's crazy because as we, even in college, I was still looking up to who I was at seventeen. I'm like, man, he was that dude, right? He played with Cam Newton. He got all them scholarship offers. He was that dude. I was looking, I was looking back into the past, man. And you know, and I, so I, I always judge myself towards that image, even though I was becoming a greater version as each year progressed. I was becoming bigger, better. You know what I mean? And even more grown as a man. Once I got over, you know, all of that, a lot of pain, man, a lot of internal pain. Once I got over all of that, you know, we had some difficult conversations. So even we, we had a couple yelling matches, me and the coaching staff, me and Coach D, me and Coach Rochard, all of them. You know, that that's why we respect each other now, though, because I we agreed to disagree. And then at the end of the day, you know, I won, I guess. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won. I stood on what I said and I came back and I did everything that ain't nobody think I was going to do, man. And it's and once I stopped thinking about it like that, though, I, I stopped, to, you know, because, again, like I said, it was it was nobody's fault. So it was everybody's fault. Mm -hmm. So it was it was if you with me, I love you. If you're not with me, it's fuck you. It's, right. get out of here. Yeah, it's the yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it was it was and I was completely consumed by that. You know, so I had to, once you overcome all of that stuff, man, and, you, and you, you use that energy correctly, you know, you can do great things. You can transcend yourself. So then how, how did it feel just being back out there again in spring mm -hmm. ball and just a real snap, real meaningful reps uh, after everything that you done went through, all the tough conversations, the shouting matches, the yep, yep. Hard days, man, that had to feel like a weight lifted off your shoulder at that point. Man, huge. Huge. I was, you know, I got out there and I'm like, man, I ain't been out here in a while. It's fast. And then, you know, it's moving. But I, and bro, I, I was, I, man, I, Dave, I, I went out there for my cleats on the first time and I got hit. And then, you know, and I'm hitting and then I'm rolling around on the ground. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I'm good. Oh, I'm really good. Like, I really, okay, cool. Let's go. You know, and then it, just the progression of it. Like, I think that year I spent the whole year on scout team and I loved it. I loved just trying to get myself back. But it was crazy because, I didn't realize that while being hurt, while going through the four years of rehab, while dealing with being on crutches for two years, I developed the process, right? I developed the process of a buildup, right? To where you want to be. And it's like, okay, perfect. Your goal is up here, but you all the way down there. Yeah. Each step of the way, it keeps stacking, each step of the way. So that's all I told myself that year, man. Every day, every practice, you're going to get a little bit better. You're going to continue to work and grow, and then you will be back to where you want to be. No, I like that. And then so it came to a point where it's like, okay, for you, and it'd be interesting to get your mindset at this, yeah. you know, of, okay, I think it's going to be best for me to continue. Because, again, you develop friendships. It's not like these days where people were at a school for one year and then they out or people were at a school, they, they you know, whatever, they flip-flop and then mm -hmm. try to support a free agency. Man, we had a real family back in Michigan State where yes. you, hey, you, you with your, your guys, Year after year after year, y'all going out spending a lot of time outside of football, inside of inside of the building. But then you come to that conclusion, like, okay, it's gonna it's gonna be it's I think it's best for me to seek elsewhere for my playing career, which ultimately you land in that Fort Lewis College in Colorado. Yeah. So I asked, what was that process or that time frame going through that whole uh, navigating that journey? You know what's funny, man? When I came back, you know, I said it in an interview. When I came back everybody's quiet now. Everybody was quiet and they looking at me and they celebrating me. And it's crazy because after that first game, I feel like that was a hoorah. That was my graduation. That was why Arthur Ray came back, played in the first game. Thank you. Thank you. Done. Right? To everybody else. And I'm like, no, no. We just get like, started. Yeah. 
again, I'm standing on what I said. This is what I want to do. This is the level I want to do it at. If I can't do that here, I graduate in December, right? Let me move on. Like, yeah, let me move on, period. And you know that then I then I had to I had to had to become resourceful, right? You know, again, you know, when when you when you got a lot of energy and when you want to accomplish things, you know this, you gotta research, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. So, yeah. right. So what's the first thing I did as being smart and understanding the um understanding the landscape, then I called the NCAA. I said, uh, you know, I graduate in December of twenty twelve and um I've been sick. I had cancer and uh I got I probably got I probably got a paperwork that can fill this room up. You know, can I is there any way you can you tell me how many years I got left? Let me transfer you. Hey, Arthur, send all your medical documents. Like, Man, I must have faxed over four hundred pages of Good. medical documents. And then the only thing I they probably they, they called me and said, Arthur, you don't need to send nothing more. You got two, <laughs> you got two years left. Oh yeah, I got two. Oh, let's get busy. Like right, I I can so now. I guess right. That would have been that's so normal now with the transfer portal era. But I got granted two years left because I've proven that three of my years that counted as an athlete, I was hurt. I was on crutches. I was rehabbing. So they gave me two back. Once I heard that, I was like, oh, the sky the limit. Let's get busy. And when you, you speak on relationships, man, and you speak on how much of a family we was, which that's exactly what it was. We was a family estate, man. Like we all we all close, which is why we close to this day, which is why it ain't nothing for us to pick back up. Yep. But um, the reason I went to Fort Lewis because of relationships. Jordan Benton had transferred the year before. My God. Yeah, oh, I, he, I didn't realize he went yeah, out to Fort Lewis. I, I did not know that. Yeah, wow. Fort Lewis. So he was recruiting me the whole time because I was on the way. I'm going to tell you a story. It's funny. Now, the O-line coach at, at Northwestern right now, Kurt Anderson, he was the O-line coach at Eastern Michigan. I was going to Eastern Michigan. I was about to go right down the street. Cool. I'm going to play at Eastern. Yep. Finish these last two years. Prove that I can still play at a high level. I'm good. He was recruiting me at Eastern Michigan. He took a job with the Buffalo Bills. He took a job with the Buffalo Bills, and then that's why I went to Fort Lewis. I was going to Eastern oh. Michigan. Yeah, and then you but and you gotta think this different time now. This ain't transfer portal time where you can shop yourself to coaches like I, you know, I'm I, I you gotta go. I had to talk to Jen Smith, enter myself as a grad transfer, and then you know, then figure that out. But I had no clue, man. I'm doing all this alone. Yeah. And plus, I, you know, at that time, I'm I'm angry with Michigan State, and I'm like, okay, they ain't gonna give me my shot. I'm gonna go ball, right? And, but but thank, but through the grace of God, that's what I did, man. And then even, it's crazy. Even at Fort Lewis, adversity. Fort Lewis adversity. I, I get to I get to game six, tear my meniscus. Really? So you started, so you come in day one, you earn the starting spot. Is oh, yeah. oh, I came in, I, I came in day one at Fort Lewis, so that boy boy was back, moving and grooving. I was, what? But I went down this spring ball, I'm dogging people. I got voted a captain. I had only been there three months. Yeah, I got voted a captain first year at Fort Lewis. Oh, yeah, see this this the untold story, man. Because I don't, you know, I don't do I don't I don't I don't really really speak on it a lot because it, it what you know, it wasn't for that. It was I was just trying to prove myself that I was back. Like I man, I I got the Fort Lewis, got off, man. It, it's um, ball desperate and came back. Got voted the captain. Starting, I'm starting that left tackle. So I'm starting that left tackle Fort Lewis, small D two, the middle of nowhere. Probably twenty people at the game. I don't care. They my right, ball. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. I'm playing ball. So I, man, we get to week six. John L. Smith is our coach, mind you. Now, how funny is that? Really. Yeah, it's that John L. Smith, former Michigan State John L. Smith. This is how God works, man. God he, the, he the head, he the head guy. He was, he was the head coach during my my last year at Fort Lewis, right? <laughs> so, man, we uh go down there and um uh, I get I, I tear my meniscus week six, tear my meniscus. So I'm I come I had surgery up there. Another another adversity. I'm out I'm out three months. So I go I go home to Chicago rehabbing rehabbing all that time. That three months go past, and then um, next thing I know, I'm back at Fort Lewis. First game of the season, my O line coach he say, "Hey, uh, hey, the Falcon Scout here to see you." Um, really? What? Because so you gotta understand this. You gotta understand that moment was more special to me personally than me playing my first game at Michigan State. And then now this me, I'm telling you, this is some scoop. Now this, yeah, this I'm in the locker room. I'm in the locker room. My O-line coach say the Atlanta Falcon Scout is here today to see you. And I'm like, I'm who, me? <laughs> right. I'm in here like, me? Oh, yeah? 
I'm like, wow. And that again, mm -hmm. but again, it's it's the things that I said. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Ain't nobody, we don't got no fans at the game. How did they find me? That's what I'm thinking. But then I'm like, God, I'm like, bet. I've been betting on myself this whole time. I've been getting through it first. Yeah, I've been keeping my head down and everything seeming to work out. Now I'm I'm in that momentum. Now it's crazy. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you how life works, and I'm gonna tell you how God works. Second play of the game. Tear my meniscus again. Boom. Right in front of the Atlanta Falcon Scout. Don't nobody know this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tear my meniscus again. Same leg? Nope. Yeah, same one that they just repaired, yep, right? Because yep. you know that your meniscus don't get blood supply, so they stitch it together, hoping yep. that it stay. It, it, it tears, and so it tore again, and so then they cut it off. I'm out three weeks now. Now I'm I'm hearing that um that the NFL considered me a medical reject. I've been hurt too much. I got the cancer and everything that's going on with my leg. Plus, I got hurt again going to Colorado. I finished the seven. I finished the last seven games of the season and then get voted D two All American. Ball them last. Are you going with the? I missed, with the I missed, no, no, I missed two weeks. I got surgery. Was out two weeks. Came back. Ball the rest of the season. Ball the rest of the season. Ag, yeah. So then that that's when I that's when I um and then see this the thing. It was even in the midst of turmoil, and this is what I tell people, this is what I tell my players, this is what I tell anybody in life. In the midst of turmoil, there's still opportunities. You just got to be wise enough and you got to be calm enough to see it. When you angry, it's loud. When you angry, it's, oh, man, oh, man, oh, no, no, oh, no, no, no. There's, nah, calm down, man. Find peace of the chaos. It's chaotic around you, but look at the opportunity. So now, check this out. We played a team called Colorado State Pueblo, one of the top Division II programs in the nation. They had three D linemen make it to the NFL. Morgan Fox plays D tackle for the Los Angeles Rams right now. He was on that team. Really? Morgan Fox, and there was two other guys, right? They 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 top in the they top in Division II. So they're on the Division II top 100 NFL prospect to look at list. And we had a game against them. They ain't lost a game in two years. At Fort Lewis, and we beat them. And I had the game of my career. Really? Game of my career. I'm telling you, I had the game of my career. Dogging them. I had the game of my career. And I'm assuming the scouts was there. Yeah, yes, yes. When we beat them 23 to 22. The, it was a hell of a game. It was a physical game. You know what I mean? And and it was, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was the opportunity in the midst of turmoil. You gotta think. I'm I got that game circled, and I just had meniscus surgery. I just had meniscus surgery. And if we, if this is my last year playing. I'm go, we gonna go out. And then, man, long story short, that season ended. Played well, got an agent, went to train, and then got an opportunity. Wow. The Dolphins. And so, 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 blink, blink, adversity, success, adversity, success, adversity, success, adversity, adversity on top of adversity. Then success, adversity, and you still right where you wanna be. Right. So, so that's why. I mean, that shows how much you really wanted it because, again, like you said, the yeah. first time just being out three months, and I told him this was at Michigan State in the Alamo Bowl practicing, and I had surgery, and I was out three months. So I understand mm -hmm. oh, that second time to only be out a couple of weeks and then get back to it. And you really wanted it at that point. Man, I, I was I was obsessed. They were obsessed. Well, I tell anybody, I, I'm different. I'm obsessed because I don't I'm, I don't I don't he, I don't hear. I don't hear shit unless it's what I want to hear. Yeah. Terms of my voice. Well, I'm hearing all the critics. I hear it all, though. I hear you. Like I hear it. I mean, you ain't got to do this. I know I don't have to do it. I want to. No. Man, you ain't got to prove it. I'm proving it to myself, not you. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, so so then the whole Miami Dolphins things come, and then obviously you 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 kind of you their free agent, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, that thing that that opportunity goes away is going. Then I guess at that period in your life. Because now it's like, okay, do you keep at it or do you kind of do something different? How was your mindset with that? Because uh, maybe yeah. first question, the first part of the question is you see a lot of athletes who continue to try to kind of make, you know, hey, man, we're going we gonna to kind of roll this thing to the world, uh, ride this thing to the wheels, fall off as far as trying yeah. to get the opportunity year after year as mm -hmm. opposed to saying, okay, maybe my time is up or I know I was talking to Benny Fowler uh, when I was interviewing him and kind of was asking him about his time in the NFL. And he's saying, hey, man, it's – uh, just when there's no more opportunities, then you know it's, it's time to do something different. So I, I guess how did you look at that? Was it just okay? Maybe I'm playing and then I'm playing and my time is up, or do I just decide in the middle of playing that okay, I just kind of want to do something different? 
Uh, I guess how how was your mindset at that point in time? Man, um, to be honest, I had already went through it. So that was the beauty. That was the blessing of me going through all the adversity. I had already I had already had all those thoughts of what's life going to be like after ball because I had it early. Again, you I got a thousand people in my ear. You don't have to do this. Wow. Like just you know, just go be you know, go be you know, go go be yeah, outstanding citizen, and you know, go go you know, go choose your, your your career path and start working that. I had already had them thoughts and those conversations. So when it came, it hit me, but it didn't hit me as hard as I know it hit some guys now. And it it, it go back to what we what we what we talked about in the beginning, man. It's your identity. It's what you associate yourself with. And I learned early, I learned at 17 that me being a ball player was just a part of me. It wasn't me. You know, like it was the, the, the energy was me, the driving force, the, 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 no, I'm a, I'm a do what I say I'm a do. No, I'm a accomplish the goals that I want to accomplish. That was me. Right. And, I, and it had to, life had to show me that in a way that I could receive it, which was football. Because like I said, even though everything happened, I still accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. And now the transition, I made the transition from, I, I took a year off from football completely. I worked in sales. I worked for right. NCNSA, Riverdale to recruit the service. Yeah, 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 for sure. I, I guess I did. I didn't know that. I didn't know I that took, you took a year off of. Took a year off of ball. I took all. Of, I took all of 2016 off of football. Right. Worked in sales. And I'm working in sales and stuff, and I'm like, man, uh, I ain't. I ain't really a corporate America, and I, I ain't. <laughs> so you know, I'm. I'm like, man, I ain't really liking this. So you know, I, I don't. You know, I enjoy the process, but it's crazy, y'all. Again. It's always a silver lining, but that led me right back to the field, right back to coaching. So I started training, started training O-linemen, which eventually led to me creating what is now the O-line lab, which is my business. But you know, And that started coming from with my passion. Football always been my passion. I didn't realize coaching was my passion till I, till I seen a young me and I was able to pour into him and then watching him have success made me feel good. Like, you know, when, he, when I, I told him, you know, how to do something well, and I'm like, damn, he balling. Yeah. And I feel good. I feel like I'm balling. I, you know, like it, it made me, it touched me in a way. And I was like, damn, yeah, yeah, come back on the field. I'll be back here at noon tomorrow. Yeah, come on back. Yeah, yeah, we finna get you right. I'm finna get you. Yeah, we, we gonna get you right, man. Get you ready for some camps. And then I had a, my first kid, man, he went to, went to, uh, went to the Nike camp and, and balled performed well and I, I couldn't tell you it, it was like it was like I had a son I'm fired up yeah, yeah I'm gonna stand next to his pop going like I'm going crazy because he out there you know and then he he started to get scholarship offers and I'm like Man, this is it I'm like this is making me this is what I truly enjoy this makes me feel like I'm I'm giving back too, giving back to all the knowledge and the places I've been and the things I able to accomplish are you still at the sales job at that point? Or are you like completely? Yeah, I'm, I'm halfway in the sales job. I'm halfway, I'm halfway like, sure. hey, this ain't what I'm supposed to be doing. This sales job is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. But then I'm like, I don't want to coach though. I like training. I like just training O linemen. Like I, I just want to craft and mold O linemen. I don't want to be a coach. I'm still saying that. I'm saying that a thousand times, man. And then, uh, why, why not? Why didn't you want to be a coach out of curiosity? Because it seems it's like. It's crazy. You know what's crazy? The time, which is which the now I made it now. You know, I made it now. The time commitment and then the, you know, I just I was I didn't I didn't want to I didn't want to be a coach. I like doing it on my own time. I like training when I wanted to, and I like being able to turn it off when I wanted to. You know what I mean? So, but then it, a high school coach he kept asking me, Mike Bain. He kept asking me, man. He kept he's man. Co come out here, coach my whole line. Come out here, coach my whole line. I'm like, nah, you was out. I'm training his son all the time. He like, man, come out here, coach my along. I'm like, all right, I'll be out there Tuesday, man. What time y'all on the field? All right, I go out there, man. I never left, and I never left. It's Was that crazy. at the De La Salle in 2017? De La Salle, De La Salle, and, and, and yep, and De La Salle in 2017, 2018, yep. And then you got to the point where you loved it so much, you like, okay, I'm gonna be the head coach of following yeah. here in high school. <laughs> well, you can't get jump from not wanting to do it. Hey. Coaching the old line and said, "Okay, I'm about to be the head guy." Hey, went in it, man. Went in it. Went in it face first, man. I and I, you know, and I. It's crazy because it's when you're doing something you truly enjoy, and when you're doing something that you know is right, everything is telling you that it's right. Like that same feeling, you know how you go to practice when we play ball, man. And you, I don't care what's going on outside, you forget it. Forget it. 
That's how I feel when I'm coaching. I used to say that all the time. That was that sanctuary when you're on the field. Right. That's how I feel when I'm coaching. I get right back on the field. Yeah, I ain't putting the cleats on, but I'm jogging out there still. I hit the field, and I'm like, bet, I got my guys. Let's get busy. And that is still my sanctuary, man. Once I figured that out, like you said, things happen fast. Like my coaching career, boom, just start moving fast, man. Man, look, it. I'm looking at this joint like, okay, 2017, you at the South Central coach, <laughs> then 2018 head coach, and then next thing you know, you at Norfolk, you in at the collegiate level. And it's yeah. boom, boom, boom. Like you said, we were saying earlier, typically you get a GA position. You may do that a couple years. Hey, heck, I can see back when we was at Michigan State, it was a couple cats who they never had that transition from out of the GA role into being able to coach a position, uh, uh you know, a, a position or uh just being on a co- actual like assistant coach or whatever the case may be. They never got yeah. that 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 bump up from being a GA, which again is a typical route, but you right. did it completely different to go from a high assistant high school coach, high school coach to all of a sudden, and, and again, only a year time frame, a couple of years. Next thing you know, you are you know coaching the online at Norfolk University Division Two here in Michigan. So how, how did that opportunity come about? Because again, this is atypical to say the least mm-hmm. from being able to start your coach career at the collegiate level. Uh, so how, how did that opportunity come about at, at Norfolk? Man, relationships, Spartan dog relationships. So Zach Huter was the old line coach at Northwood before me. Really? And yeah. I know Bill was here as well as a running back. I didn't know Zach Huter was the old yeah. line coach there. So, so Zach, Zach Huter called me and he said, man, he said, you want to get in? I said, want to get in where? He said, man, you say you want to do this. You say you want to coach college. Do you want to get in? I'm, hell yeah, let's go. You know, so, man, I, I, um, I drove to Grand Rapids and had a two-hour conversation with the head coach. And got hired on the way back home. Really? Now, but yeah. so when he was transitioning out, or were you like, no, 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 he like just was—he was on family vacation, and he was like, "I'm gonna interview you. Can you make it to Grand Rapids? Yeah, Grand Rapids ain't not two and a half hours from Chicago. Yeah, of course. So I drove up there. And so mind you, now I'm a dean of students. I'm dean of students at Curie High School, and I'm the head football coach. So I'm good. You know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm good. You know, I'm I'm um, I'm doing well in the city. You know, from a financial standpoint. And I get offered this D2 coaching job, and this D2 coaching job, like, cut my salary in half. I'm like, oh, you know, hey. So I'm driving home, and I'm like, I'm driving home, and I'm like, again, where my mind go to? Oh, well, yeah, so they said you were going to get off crutches at this time. Oh, well, yeah, they said you were going to do You know what? I want to get in this. I want to get in this college game. Let's go, Lord. Boom. Send my resignation in the Curie High School, which you got a lot of love and respect for them. Right. And took a chance and bet it on myself, man. Took a chance and bet it on myself. I took a took a pay cut to become a college coach because I knew coaching was what I truly loved. And For sure. Yeah. No, man, that's man, that's a crazy story. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. so with, at, at Northwood, were, were you, because you said Zach Huger, he was an O-line coach. Were you up under him for a minute? or did No, you- no, no. I took over as the O-line coach. Zach Huter went back to Michigan State and worked in recruiting. So Zach Huter worked at Michigan State, D'Antonio, last year. His last year there before he retired. Okay. Mm-hmm. I see, yeah, and I didn't know that. Uh, actually, he just hit me up on LinkedIn maybe a couple weeks ago, uh, uh, Zach Huter and all. So that, that's crazy because I think he uh, he like the financial industry now, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, that, so that's crazy. So then you do a couple years at Northwood. So I know you're always, not, not necessarily always looking for the next, well, you, yeah, looking for the next opportunity. So at what point did you say, okay, it's time to make another move? Well, you know what's crazy? In this business, it, it, it really don't work work when you want it to work. You know, either somebody got to find you or it's relationship-based. But I'm going to tell you what, COVID happened, right? So everybody's at home, right? So me being me, me coming from, I'm coming from an entrepreneur, business owner, sales mindset, right? You know, so, so that's the mindset I come from. I'm not coming from a traditional coaching GA, uh, you know, sit there and wait your turn. You know? So I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here at Northwood, and I'm like, okay, how can I showcase Northwood as well as showcase myself? So, uh, coaching clinics happen. So everybody at home on Zoom, everybody's doing coaching clinics. Everybody's starting to do that. So I say, you know what? So FootballScoop.com is that's the biggest, one of the biggest providers for coaching information. That's like the coaches. That's like the coach's go-to website, anything okay. going on in the football coaching world. So they was offering, they said, hey, hey, let's do, we're going to have a virtual clinic series. So I reached out and said, hey, I want to do a clinic series on O-line play. 
for uh, for Northwood. So did that, man. And, and and when I tell you, I didn't realize how big it was. I did not realize how big it was. I did that coach's clinic, man. It's probably a 45-minute clinic. It's still on YouTube to this day. And uh, John Masco called me, the offensive line coach for the, for the Washington Commanders. He was then. He called me. Man, saw your clinic. Loved it. This is Coach Masco from Washington. I'm like, Coach, who? And then, hey, he really, he just called. He called me and he was like, "Hey, you you on the right track? You're doing the right things. You're gonna be you're gonna be good in this business." And I'm, wow, you know, yeah. And I, you know, I ain't do nothing but do nothing but had a clinic. What we do, how we go about our business at Northwood, how I train the whole lineman, stuff like that. So I just start getting, I got put out there, and I start getting more people attracted, man. And from a from a standpoint, they just start hitting me up, and I start getting more friends in the business. Next thing I know, I get a DM for Cody Kennedy, who's the tight ends coach at University of Arkansas. I get a Twitter DM. I don't know this man now. And it's not how this works in this business. Now, I'm right. telling you, this story, yeah. I get a Twitter DM from him. Hey, give me a call tomorrow. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm like, okay. Right, right. I call him tomorrow. I said, what's going on, coach? You know, I, I said, how you doing? And he's like, yeah, I'm good, man. How are you? And I'm like, great. You know, I'm on the phone like, Okay, like I, you know, we ain't never met each other, so I'm like, you know, and he said, "Hey man, um, I got an analyst spot down here, O line analyst spot down here at Arkansas, man. Would you be interested?" Oh, what? Yeah, let's go. Oh, let's get in the SEC. Let's get busy. Yeah, you know, it is. So, man, I, I got reconnected with him and Coach Pitt. That's how I got the job. Crazy. That's how I got the job. I got a job at Arkansas from a man that I had never personally met. Right. Um, I think we we had probably had a couple interactions on Twitter, but other than that, you know, then, but then you you know, it's just talking. You never know who watching, man. You never who paying attention to what's going on. I like that, man. And you and you continue you continue to put things out that you believe in, and you continue to have conviction for the things you want, man. Because you never know you never know how it's gonna come about, right? No, and I like that. So so at what point? Because you're an uh, analyst at uh, Arkansas. You were doing some fellows uh, or some internships with, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, Jacksonville Jaguars, and then I think yeah. this past year with uh, Green Bay. So, yeah. what, I guess as you're processing that, what made you like? What made those become uh, important for you? Was it the relationships? Was it just kind of learning how they doing things at the NFL level? Uh, what made you want to go do those internships with those fellows? Because again, obviously, you're still able to coach uh, in terms of in college at that point because it's not mm -hmm. like a full time thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But why, why was those uh, opportunities important for you? Real important. Ultimate goal, man. Uh, one of my ultimate goals, you know, uh, probably 1A, you know, but uh, NFL offensive line coach, it ain't a lot of NFL offensive line coaches that look like us. Yep. You know, it ain't a lot of offensive line coaches in the nation. You know what I mean? It is now guys are starting to build and grow. But then, like back then, 2019, 2018, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, you know, so this this position that they talk about it all the time, the quarterback position and the O line position. Ain't too many black coaches, right? So, you know, I I, I uh again I looked at it as a challenge. And you know how I feel about challenges. Challenges yeah, turn sure. me up. Challenges turn me up. So right, I'm like, okay, all right, let's you know, let's 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 this the next journey, you know. Mm -hmm. So that that's what uh what led to me wanting to do the fellowships. Is they have an application process where you submit. I just start reaching out to NFL coaches and letting them know that I'd love to come up there and spend some time. And, uh, yeah, the Jacksonville Jaguars was the first one, and it was it was great, man, uh, down there with uh, Coach Ty Washington. And, uh, you know, learned a lot. They put me in the mix, too, so I was able to learn on the fly and to be around them guys, man. It, it really, really motivated me. It really confirmed that, that I could do it. That, that right. Was, that's what it was, man. And I was going to say, that's a big part of it, just, again, especially if you're like, okay, this – this one of the goals right here to be at this level, but then to be thrown in a mix and there's nothing like getting that confirmation, like, oh yeah, I can do this. Yep. And that's that's yep. that's a big boost to the psyche as you kind of going back to maybe wherever you at, like, okay, yeah, I, I can really do this and just giving you even more, uh, just kind of lighting that fire even more within you just like, okay, let's get it. Yep. So no, I'm gonna proceed, man. So so then you had a a a, a maybe a short stint at Arkansas as the as the analyst, and then mm -hmm. you got this the opportunity with uh, Howard. So I, I guess how did that whole thing come about? Relationships, a relationship I made at Arkansas. Uh, Howard had an opening. I it's a guy named Charlie uh, C Dub C Dub Charlie Williams at, at Arkansas. He's like the assistant director of recruit. 
And um, he reached out to the, the office coordinator at, at Howard and sent them my name. So y'all got a whole line job open. He said, I got a guy, got a guy. Mm-hmm. And then he sent them. So now um, the first time that this happened, they hired somebody else, but it came back around. And then the OC from Howard, the OC from Howard reached back out to me. And he said, hey, man, um, you know, we uh we looking for an O-line coach, just lost our O-line coach. You'd be interested in the interview. I said, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. So, man, we we had a three-hour Zoom interview, three-hour Zoom interview. I, I did my thing and uh, didn't didn't know the head coach. Head coach grilling me on the interview, too. He asking all types of questions and, and scenarios. I loved it. You know, it's crazy because I had been prepping because I didn't know the next opportunity I was going to get. But you know, I that's the that's that like I said, that's that obsessive nature that I have naturally. You know, I'm in my yep. basement, I'm watching tape, and I'm like, okay, if I did have an O line this week, how would we prep for these guys? And what's my process? What practice gonna look like? Dot, 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 dot. Then when I got the call for the interview, I had already had all that stuff ready. I was all oh, okay, you know. So it was, it was um, sort of you know how I live, man. See the unseen, get prepared for the unseen. Like if you know you gonna be there, get ready to be there. You know, I, you know, so I so believe that one. I'm gonna take that one from seeing oh, those, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. unseen. Yeah, see the unseen. Prepare for the unseen, man. Cause you know you if you especially if you you believe in your path and you know what the end goal is gonna be, yep. at the end of the day, that's what that's how you gotta move anyway. So you're not operating you're not operating what well, some people say it's uh it's unrealistic or it's crazy. That's cool. I've been called that a thousand times. You already know that. Right. Man, my family think I'm crazy. They think I'm obsessed. That's cool. You know, that's, that's, that's hey, all, right. all of that. You got you gotta be willing to take all that on the chin, man, for what you really want to do. No, that's I mean, I completely agree with you hundred uh, percent with that. But then with the as kind of we round this thing out, so we uh you got the O line lab. I see you guys are doing some stuff, uh started back up this month doing some stuff. How are you kind of managing all that? Is it okay? I'm assuming that you got more of a team now, as you yep. are. Uh, well, you guys are uh, training like a, a, a big group of uh, up and coming athletes now online, man. So mm-hmm. I guess is that always going to be the thing that you're doing again? Because you're saying you already said hey, I'm not the traditional uh, coach and I I don't have the traditional past. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm still kind of yep. get at it, and this seems mm-hmm. like this is kind of seem to grow into your baby, uh, even. With all the stops along the way, with you know high school, college, uh, you know the, the NFL, and then and back and back to college. So I guess yep. where is that now, and where do you see that going forward in the future, as far as the online lab? I think the, the online lab is is like you said. That's my baby, man. That's uh, you know, right now, right now, I'm more in the C, CEO role and more working from afar. But I but I was smart. I think the toughest thing when you're an entrepreneur, especially you a you a service based entrepreneur like I am. Where, where you're sort of the face of your business, yeah. the toughest thing is recreating yourself. It's, it's recreating yourself to be somewhere where you can't be, per se. So I think that I I was blessed. Some of the assistant coaches that helped me with, when I was at Curie, you know, my main man, Coach Reed, he's back home running the show now. And one of my good friends, Keith Otis, he's running the show on, on a second part in, in the northern suburbs of Chicago right now. So having a team, man, having a team and having people you trust, that can be an extension of the business. Because I see this will happen. When I first went to Northwood, uh, the O-line lab, it was, it was, it was just called my academy then. It it died, it stopped. Because I was, yeah. only, I was the only one doing it. Yep. And then I, you know, I, I'm sitting there, they like, man, where the academy coming back? I got old pair, where the academy? Academy's gone, the academy. And I'm like, man, it's just me. I can't do that. I gotta recreate myself i have to find the processes where this thing can go so it did i get of course the 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 as negative as it was it brought so many positives covid brought us what zoom yep. what can i what can i do over zoom if, if if you stood up and you was on a grass field right now hey day you're gonna get in that stance right now hey put that call right there that's what we gonna do yep. that's what we're doing today so that's wow so i started virtual training right i could create the academy without me necessarily being there in person so that was my first introduction to that. And then, you know, uh, my guys, you know, Coach Reed and, and Keith, they was doing different things. Once things cleared up for them and we was able to sit down and put together a plan, the plan is the O-line lab. And now now we we training every Saturday. We got youth groups and we got high school groups and ages all, older. And when I come home, I get busy with the older guys, you know, when I can. When I when I come home and I can get busy with our older guys, our some of my NFL guys and our older college guys is getting ready. 
you know, that's what I will do. But it's something that's always going to be, I'm always be an entrepreneur at heart. You know, I, I, like I said, untraditional route in terms of coaching, but uh, it's something I definitely wanted to grow as well as the, my non for profit that I created a year ago, the LA Ray Foundation. So, so then, I, and before it kind of ended with the LA Ray Foundation, how important was it? Because you had mentioned something about just the processes. Just with any business, when you're trying to scale something, when you're trying to grow something, it's yep. one thing when you're a one man show, but when you're trying to grow something into something that's going to outlive you or where you have to, you know, board a CEO role and you got understudies, if you will. How important is it to have those systems, those processes in place that can be duplicated, even mm -hmm. though you're not there uh, uh, you know, every day to actually, you know, train and, uh, yeah, yeah, train and direct the, the, the athletes? How important is having those systems and processes in place to be able to do that? Man, very important. It's operational because you got, man, when I was, okay, I was, I was training before I took the Northwood job. We had Chicago rocking. I'm talking about 45 to 50 linemen in one place every really? Sunday. Let's get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, 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 you know, it, it, we we had it going, you know, and then we, I'm even teaming up with other groups, you know, it was, uh, it was Hero, it was, it was other, it was hands down training, it was different, different groups in the city, and we doing events, we doing linemen events, like I, it was growing, but the thing was, I was the guy at the door, I'm the guy sitting out. Whenever a kid walk in, I got to stop training and send out the waiver form to make sure the parents sign the waiver form. I got to make sure they know, okay, the cash app is this. I'm collecting payments. I'm doing, I'm the secretary and I'm training a You know, I was doing everything. So I think once I found a way to, to, you know, to delegate those processes uh -huh. or to utilize the technology and okay, it's a quick link, shoot that link out or boom, have an automated process, you know, Google forms. Start doing, you know, get cre let's get creative, man. So you ain't got to take so much on the back end and really the collecting money. You know, that's a task within itself. You got to collect money. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm collecting money and then I'm delegating money out. I'm like, okay, he yelped today. Let me pay him. Let me do this. Let me, you, you know what I mean? So trying to, trying to do the, the checks and balances when I got cash here, cash there, I got it coming from all different places trying to, man, it was a lot. But that's why. I, when I had left and went to Northwood, I was like, man, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Who gonna collect the money? Yeah, who gonna get make sure? Who gonna make sure all the kids sign the medical waiver? Who gonna make sure the parents are informed of, you know, bring water and this is what needs to be done. This is where the facility is. This is where you can park. Yeah. You know, it's, it's crazy. You think about all of those um, processes that you don't really think is important, but it, it it's important to streamline your business to make sure your business is. One approachable, make sure that you look professional. That was right. my biggest thing. I and you would talk to any of my guys that work with me. I hate when anything is unorganized or unprofessional. Yeah. Because I'm I'm like, okay, based on credentials and everything that I've done and everything that the guys with me have done from a coaching standpoint, we are one hundred percent credible. Right. So now I want to make sure that process, I want to make sure when they walk in the facility, oh man, facility, facility solid. Yep. Uh, number number two, okay, where's my money going? What most consumers are thinking, where's my money going? Like, is right. it worth it? And so I want to make sure they feel good about us. And we 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 take care of our business. We're professional looking. We professional in the way we act. You know what I mean? And just from from a standpoint of a of the things we know, the knowledge is there. That that is like it's a service service base. So us right. being customer service and then having you know knowing how to interact and all of those things, those things are important. Uh, yeah. It was some guys that I couldn't have work with us because I'm okay. He's not the best with people, so he can't he can't be a representation yeah, of the brand. Sure. He just yeah, you know yeah, those. Yeah, it's, it's all things that you know. As an owner, I wasn't thinking about. I'm like I'm just training line, and it's like no, you're running a business. Once yeah, I transition, yeah. once I transition from, oh, I'm just training line, giving back, having fun. You're running a business that you want to be successful, so. Oh, that's nice. And then you mentioned the L.A. Ray Foundation. What, what, I guess, what's that about? And uh, what, what prompted you to start that? Man, the L.A. Ray Foundation. So, right, as I continue to grow in this coaching thing, and, of course, you create a business to generate revenue, of yep. course, which is everything, right? So from a training perspective, with, with the level of expertise and, mm -hmm. and, and everything that I, that I bring to the table, right, you want to be able to offer your services, but you want to be able to offer your services for what you're worth, Right. So now, coming from where we come from, south side of Chicago, the ski, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's, so like a good. lot of the guys, right? A lot of the guys that come from our same neighborhoods that look like us can't afford the services. 
True. Do I, do I not want to provide it to them because they can't afford it? No, I want to provide an alternative. So that's where the LA Ray Foundation came into place. So I created a non-for-profit foundation where people were allowed to donate to that now. So now you can sponsor. You can sponsor the next know. day, the next Arthur Ray, the next Glenn Winston, the next mm-hmm. Le'Veon Bell, the next, you know what I mean? Like all of that guys and that, and from that stature, because now it's a, uh, you know, I could have went to the suburbs in Chicago and made a bunch of money, made bank. I'm from the south side of the city. I wanted my business in the south side of the city because I'm from the south side of the city because I know 16-year-old Arthur Ray would have loved to train with 33-year-old Arthur Ray. Like, Absolutely. Yeah, at the end of the day. So you, with all of his knowledge and every place that he's been and all of the great things that he could tell me that he could pour into me. I see me when I see them young guys, you know? So that's why I was... It was important for me to create that on the nonprofit side. And uh, yeah, man, it's, it's building that. Now that side is a little bit, it's on pause, but it's not because we continue to build and I got some events coming up in the summer. I'm just trying to navigate that around my football schedule. But yeah, this, as far as being a business owner and entrepreneur, I'll always do that, you know, whether I'm coaching or not, always. Uh, man, and I like that. And I'll probably even say that most coaches, I mean, I- this okay, yeah, you're coaching, but you're still an entrepreneur. You're still kind of selling yourself. You're a brand, and 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 just trying to make the most out of you know being a brand and kind of thinking of yourself as being an entrepreneur as opposed to just a football coach. Exactly. I think that uh, I think people would, yeah. man, it, it, I think it'll be more beneficial to look at yourself in that light. So, but I, I guess maybe in transition in terms of closing, what advice would you would you give to? Man, we all facing adversity at some point in time, whether yep. it's kind of money situations, whether it's kind of going through illness. Uh, whatever the case may be, we all kind of have adversity multiple times throughout the year. I know we're about to go into 2024. Uh, and then just, so not, not only overcoming those adversities, but just trying to kind of, you know, having your goals and your dreams. I know we all making New Year's resolutions and uh, just mm-hmm. being able to kind of do what we need to do to kind of see that out as opposed to, okay, a month, two months into the year and then our fire die out and uh, kind of we back to where we were at. Uh, last year, whatever the case may be. So what what advice or what kind of words of encouragement or however you want to put it, would you say to those people, men or women, uh, young, you know, you know, boys or men or just young or old who yeah. are you know, going through some adversity and uh, looking to continue to see out their goals and their dreams as we go into this new year? What, I guess, words would you say to those people? Uh, number one, never forget your purpose. Um, I think that's the huge thing, man. Your purpose is going to make you push through those tough days because it's tough days coming. I still have tough days to this day. I still got things I want to accomplish as a coach and as an entrepreneur. Yep. And I'll be on myself. You ain't did this yet. You ain't, this ain't happening. If it happened, then find a way to get sit still, to be calm in the chaos. When the chaos comes, like I told you, and, and my personal experience tells me that right now, right? This is the time. This is the time when coaches get called, when opportunities come, and it's dead silent right now. Dead silent or dead. Dead pretty soon it's going to get real chaotic. Calm yourself. See the silver lining. Because you see that you got to be able to see the opportunity in the midst of the turmoil so you don't miss it. You might have an opportunity to make a process easier. You might have something that you prayed for in the midst of your anger, but you're angry. You cannot see it. That Probably one thing that I would tell my younger self, that anger is unwarranted. You're, you, you're, you're useless right now. Yep. You can't even see what's happening in front of you. Uh, you know, I have moments with myself, man, snap out of it, bro. We ain't got time for that. Like, <laughs> I like that. I like that. It's, I snap, snap out of it. We ain't got time for that. Yeah, that didn't go as planned. Okay, what's the silver lining? Did you lose anything? Is it really a setback or you just in your feelings? Right. You know, yeah, you and you and that everybody, right? You got to find a way to not sit in your feelings. Be in your feelings for the moment. Be in your feelings for the second. For the day, yeah, yeah you gotta go, man. You, you gotta, gotta go. go, like you, you gotta go. I, and I, I, um, man, that's it. like with anything, you know. Even with, with my players, my players, we we had a bad game. I'm I'm on them on the film. Whatever I mean, they feel us, I'm in my feelings. Man, we ain't performed well. At the end of the day, I say, you know what? You know what the beauty of this game is? It's always another day. It's another mm-hmm. day to get better. That's. That's a life. That's a microcosm That's of it. life. That's another. This this day That's is not indicative of that doesn't have to you know your future days. It's just today, right? And you know, I tell my guys, I take it on the chin. And I think as the leader, as the leader, do not be afraid to be criticized, to be judged, to take it on the chin. If I made one mistake as a young head coach, I was a twenty 
27, 28 year old head coach, right? And I didn't want to hear nothing I was doing wrong. I'm what? Yeah, you don't know nothing. All this. Thing. Do not be afraid to take criticism as the leader. And then as the leader, realize that your, your energy dictates everything. So you can't have a bad day. Your energy dictates everything. So if you're a business owner, if you're a representation of a company, if you're a leader of your family, as a father, as a husband, if you a coach, you know, like I am now, and you lead, I go, if I'm in my feelings, man, I shut my office door, man, my players will be here in five minutes. Cool, five minutes of feelings. All right, then they gotta go. Like, you know, and I, and I, I feel like, I feel like more, more now than never, because I see it now, even with my, with, with my players. I think the world is becoming a little bit more emotional. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing longer this long as it's channeled correctly. So it's young, Arthur Ray. It ain't nobody's fault. So it's everybody's fault. How is it everybody's fault? Right. How is it? Like I, you know, right. When I had conversations with my younger self, these things I do through meditation. And like I told you, these things I believed in. When I'm talking to my younger self, like, oh, you you trying to justify. You know, using that energy towards somebody when it's not justified, bro. You, you, you it's scattered. You just cuss this person out for what? What did that accomplish? <laughs> All right, you next. Yeah, what you, you, you know what I mean? It's like at the so at the at the end of the day, man. I think it's being self regulated, putting on blinders, learning how to sit still, man. So, so you can see the opportunity through the chaos. Sit still. Sometimes you gotta sit still. Like we 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 got phones. We got all this stuff. We got Instagram. We got social media. We consistently tap in all the time and then we can't relax. You know, that's why I believe in things like meditation. You know, I be, I just, you know, still work out, train as if I'm playing. You know, those are my outlets, my ways of, all right, let's recenter yourself, man. And then take the bad days. The people don't, you know, even me, and I, and I say people. I didn't want to, I don't want to have bad days. I don't want to have days where I don't want to, you know, like, man, I don't know if this is going to work or this I got pushed back. I remember I tried to, um, I was in the process of um, a, a merger, a contract with, with with the Chicago Public Schools, which is a big deal for my business that allow me, you know, to have, you know, to get my services done on a larger scale with the city. And, and you know, I'm upset because it's not happening or I'm upset because one person along the pipeline is taking a little bit slower moving my application process up in the pipeline. It, control what you can control, keep your head down and, 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 you know, understand, understand what you represent, understand your energy and how it, how it rubs off and affects people. Man, I like that, man. Hey, I like that a hundred percent. Well, man, I appreciate you coming on. We definitely gonna have to tap back in or hey, once you, cause I know it's, it's only a matter of time before you, uh, move up the ranks again to that NFL level and uh, to, to be an offensive line coach in the NFL. Hey, would you, out of curiosity, I, I know this in terms of trying to wrap up, but would you ever want yeah. to be a head coach or would you is just kind of want to, because I know some you know, people, I know it's, it's tough to say knowing when that opportunity comes about, especially whether it's at the collegiate or the NFL level. Yeah. Or do you think, uh, but you know how some people are like, you know, okay, I, I, I guess some people would be maybe good head coaches or some people would just be good, like position. Uh, coaches. So I guess, how do you look at it? Is that something that you would want to do if you had afforded that opportunity? Man, you know what's funny? I said uh, NFL O-line coaches 1A. Well, one, number one, is Michigan State head coach Arthur Ray Jr. I like that. That's that. Like that's that. That. What, what Coach B say? Complete the circle. Yeah. Complete the circle. For me, like for me personally, that's that will be completing the circle, wherever that comes along my career. You know, whether that's 10 years from now, 15 years from now, again, that, that same energy that 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 went, oh, you going to play again, you're not going to play again, that's my ultimate goal. Man, that would be a hell of a story, too, a hell of an ending. Well, not an ending, but that would be a hell of a, like you said, a complete in the circle moment for sure. Yep, yep. For sure. Well, man, I like that. Well, a hey, audience, I think, uh, well, I know you guys should get a lot of jewels from this one. And, uh, hey, take those lasting words that he said to heart and we'll catch you guys next time take care